Hey guys, it's Cassidy. Welcome to my channel if you're new. Welcome back if you're a seasoned subscriber. Today we are going to be talking about the nine luxury items I love but won't buy. And why? Guys, if you are new here, my name is Cassie. I'm a self-diagnosed luxury addict. I put out videos on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, so if you like luxury fashion, then you're probably gonna love it here. So head down there, subscribe, turn on the bell, become a member of our luxury addicted family. When are we going to rehab? <laughs> Never. Guys, are you ready? Let's go. Disclaimer, if you have these pieces, go off sis, because like I said, I do love them. It's just for whatever reason that we're gonna go into, um, maybe it doesn't work out for me or I don't see it working out for me or whatever. Number one is um, a little bit controversial because so many people love this and I love this too. It's just not gonna work out for me. And that is the Van Cleef Alhambra collection. What I've heard of them is that they're extremely delicate. So like you can't be in water with them and stuff like that. And here's the thing. I am lazy and I will very, very happily admit to you that I am. I don't change out my fine jewellery. I keep it on and I shower with it and I go about my daily business with all my stuff on. I full well know that I will be taking my Alhambra and showering with it and then next thing you know, the sodding mother of pearl or whatever it is has shrunk inside and you know, that's five grand down the toilet or whatever, or I have to pay to get it fixed and all of that. It's like a little bit stressful to me and I truly can't be bothered. Also, I don't think it's me. I think that it is very feminine and delicate and all of that. It's just not gonna work out and I know it. The second piece that I really, I love and I admire, but I do not see myself getting is a Chanel classic flap. I think last year I was like, oh, I could see myself getting like a colorful one, like a cobalt or an emerald. And yes, while I do still think that they are delicious and fabulous and gorgeous and everything, oh, it's not my vibe, you know? I just don't get that the butterflies in my stomach, the sort of itchiness in my veins of when I see an item and I need it. Like, like when Chanel came out with the 19 bag, I was like, yes, yes, that is me, that is my vibe. And I was just like, it was, it was an instinct. With the classic flap, I don't get the excitement. I really, really don't. And here's the thing, there's no time limit on that piece. I feel like I have literally until my, hopefully if I, you know, get to a, a pretty decent old age, I've got until that to get it. You know, it's always gonna be there. It's always gonna be part of the permanent collection in case I change my mind. But at the moment, the itch, the itch is not there. Oh, uh, item number three is another bag. And this is the Dior Lady Dior. I just feel that those Venn diagrams do not cross. You know, there is no, they are mutually exclusive. And by they, I mean me and the Dior Lady Dior. There is no, there is no overlap. I feel like once again, the style is very like feminine and cute and structured and not me in the slightest. I don't see me in that bag. The only one that I thought would work was the Delight you know, collection with like the canvasy and then more like young and cute and all of that. But even still, the design is just, oh, it's just not me. And once again, I look at other people rocking it, especially the Delight ones, and I'm like, yes. And I know that they do a mini version and you know I love it and I love it and I think it's very, very cute and adorable. Just not for me. Item number four is a Cartier Love Bracelet. Now, I have my reasons. Number one, disclaimer, I have the love ring. I love it. I got it for my um, university graduation. My thing with the love bracelet is, so the whole premise behind the love range is that it is given to you by somebody that loves you. So not that like if you buy it yourself, I think that's weird because I really don't. And like, if you want to do it, do it. I don't care, go for it. But personally, I would love it if I got that, you know, from, me basically this is maybe just a long video in order to convince him to buy me the love bracelet because truly i deserve it basically i would love to be gifted the cartier love bracelet um i just don't want to pay for it myself <laughs> here's the thing if i'm gonna buy a cartier bracelet or whatever it's gonna be the justin clut i think it's a bit more edgy and like more my vibe you know or i'm gonna go and get like a bulgari b01 bracelet very underrated very fabulous i'm actually leaning more towards that because i've literally only seen like one person that has it and i'm like ugh, living anyway so that's my thoughts on the love bracelet the next one is a weird internal challenge i have with myself about how long i can hold out without buying this item and these are the Yeezy 350s. I believe it's the 350s that are the least ugly of all. 
I believe so. They're not even ugly. They're like cute looking. So I have this internal, um, totally unnecessary challenge with myself that I've gone this long without them. I can get to my dying day without buying them. I don't know why. I know, I know as soon as I put my foot in one of those, I'm going to want to get it. But at the moment, it's just a weird internal challenge to not. Okay, and I know that that is a personal thing and I probably need to speak to a professional about that. By professional, I need a therapist, okay? We all know this. You know I'm very honest with you, so I'm just being honest and telling you my innermost thoughts, so don't come after me, please. Item number six is uh, the Max Mara Teddy Coat in basically any neutral colour. I love the Max Mara Teddy Coat. I think it is fabulous. And a couple of years ago, I had the teal one on my wish list, but for some reason, um, I never jumped and I regret it. Anyway, for, for whatever reason I didn't, still living with that terrible decision, but that teddy coat in a brown or a beige just, I, I know that's the name of it, it makes me think of a soft toy bear and I can't help but think that when people wear them. If it's in a different colour, like they did like a glorious raspberry and like a peach and literally any other colour, I'm like, yes, love that. If it's in a brown, I'm just like, are you sitting in the corner of a child's bedroom? I don't know, I don't know, I don't know why I think that. Um, I mean, I know why I think that, the, the clue is in the name. Item number seven, a Balmain overly embellished mini dress. But you're like, oh my gosh, Cassie, you love a Balmain overly embellished mini dress. And I know I do, okay? I, literally that is everything I live for. I'm sorry, but when it comes to my like, future bachelorette party, which is not in the plans, okay? But you know, years, years in the future, I would do a Kim Kardashian and I would get one of those hideously over embellished, like I can't physically walk, the dress is about 20 kg, Balmain mini dress, because I think they're everything and truly a piece of art. But it's like at least six grand and it's, I know, I know why. Oh my gosh, there's so much work that goes into it and all of the, the details and the embellishments and all of that and I totally get it. It's just that it's sad for me. It's sad for me. And I'm not at that place in life yet where I can justify six to 10 grand on a Balmain mini dress, okay? I'm sorry, I'm not there yet, okay? But when I am baller status, <laughs> best believe I shall be shimmying down in my Balmain. Okay, so this is the thing. I'm just not buying it right now, but I absolutely live for it. Item number eight, Rolex. I love a good Rolex. I really, really do. Everything from like a Submariner to the like um, Ocean Master, whatever that is, an oyster something or other. I love it, especially like, oh my gosh, like a Wolf of Wall Street, all gold one. Oh, just the money that drips from that wrist. I'm here for it. However, it's just that I think I'm more of a Hublot gal, says the girl that only has one Hublot, and, but plans on not jumping off this train. <laughs> I'm on it now. But I feel like it's not as popular as Rolex, hence why I would go down that route kind of thing. And I see, I definitely, definitely see less people with Hublots. So I feel like the next time I'm gonna look for a watch, it's most likely going to be a Hublot. Finally, a bag. If it was gifted, this is another thing. By the way, if any of these were gifted, hello, thank you very much, I will gladly accept, you know? But um, the Bottega Veneta pouch with chain, I just, I wouldn't use it very often, okay? It would definitely be like a flex piece and not a piece that I would just, you know, like, throw on and like go food shopping with. That's what I like with the majority of my bags is that they're very much like, I will wear them to a fancy dinner, I will wear them shopping on a Saturday, and I will also throw over my shoulder to go to Waitrose or whatever, you know, Tesco. We don't we don't have to be fancy, we don't, we, we don't have to do a Waitrose moment. We can do a, a Tesco Metro or whatever, that's, that's my local one. Look, I love it and I think that it's fabulous, but I just think personally for me, I would hate to do that kind of like closure and digging in about everything else that though that moment is truly something so um it's just a personal thing just a personal thing how i you know go about my life with with a bag uh, it's just gonna be a hard one for me
let me know your luxury pieces that you love but probably won't buy and why, okay? I'm going to link to another video here in case you haven't already seen it. Have an amazing morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are, and I will see you in my next video. Mwah. Bye, guys.